coming to the pass two of the assembler this is the algorithm the pass two of the assembler basically uses the opcode table that is an input to both pass one and pass two it also uses a simple table a literal table the pool tab that is generated by pass one and then it uses the intermediate code uh, generated by pass one to generate the equivalent machine program or the target program code area basically represents the area in the uh, area uh, where you are going to put in your target program that has been generated by pass two okay now you are going to make the pool tab pointer point to the first literal uh, pool and you have associated the location counter value as uh, zero okay while uh, the next statement is not till you encounter the uh, end till you not encounter the end statement uh, what we do is we we take a buffer okay so that is represented by a variable called as machine code buffer okay now second thing is if we obtain an LTORG statements okay we will start processing all the literals that is the pass to has to look at the literals that are present in the literal table of the current literal pool and which will be obtained by looking at the uh, pool tab and it will take the addresses that are associated with the literals and that would be placed into the uh, target code that is being generated now once we have processed all the literals of the current pool then we have to move the uh, pointer to the uh, to point to the next pool in the pool tab now if it happens to be start or an origin you simply take the value that is specified in the operand field and put it into the location counter now its size is zero indicating that we do not basically need to have any equivalent machine language code generated for a statement like start or origin now if it is a declaration statement okay so it is either would be dc statement so if it is a dc statement okay it will basically assemble all the constants that are present associated with dc that is a dc statement can have more than one constant it will assemble those constant in the machine code buffer okay it will then determine what is the size of memory required by the dc or the ds statement that is present there okay now if it is an imperative statement okay it would contain a symbol so, or a literal so you would get the uh, address from the symbol table or the literal table and then we would generate the responding uh, machine language instruction and place it in the machine code buffer and then we can determine what is the size of the instruction if the size of the instruction is not equal to zero then what we do is we take the entire contents of the machine code buffer and place it into the place it into an area okay uh, which would be the addition of location counter plus the address code area what this means is that if you are in the memory location has been given 500 then to that you will add the location counter value that is the base value and get the address in the main memory then you will increment the location counter by size and last is the uh, processing of end statement that is it was similar to how you are encountering an LTORG statement and when you get this you will take whatever data has been put into the code area and put it into an output file which will contain the equivalent machine language instruction okay now uh, when what about listing and error reporting that is it is not necessary a programmer always writes an assembly program correctly so there could be certain errors that he or she may have may have accidentally uh, written in the program so when er errors are encountered in our program the assembly program what does the assembler need to do okay so the first question is when should that listing of errors be done should it be done in pass one or should it be done in uh, pass two okay now when you are making the listing in pass one okay you are basically avoiding duplicate processing by pass two okay because if you make the listing in pass two then in pass one whatever errors have been encountered that would be listed but since you are only generating the list in pass two the same processing would be done by pass two so there is duplicate processing of which is done 
okay in pass to uh, if you are listing all the errors in pass to so if you are doing your listing of errors in pass one it basically avoids duplicate processing and it conserves certain amount of memory space because what errors have been detected by pass one uh, is already listed so the same need not be listed again by pass two okay now this if you do listing in pass one only certain kinds of errors can be can be determined that is syntactic errors if you have missed a comma or if you have not written a keyword if the keyword has not been written correctly like a keyword in the sense the mnemonic opcodes have not been written correctly only those kind of errors can be can be easily determined when you are doing listing in pass one but the semantic error that is if for example a label has been defined twice okay symbol has not been defined that can be determined determined only in pass two and in such case it is helpful to list the errors in list those kind of errors in pass two now when you are generating or when you are listing the errors these error messages should give the explain why the error has occurred and also should include the line number where the error has occurred now what kind of errors can be encountered in our program one is unexpected end of file that means some programmers forget to write end so basically end tells the assembler that you have to stop processing now okay so if it, that is not encountered it would go into an infinite loop now you can have an undefined symbol that is you have used a symbol in the program but it has not been defined similar case with a label a label has been used but it has not been uh, defined or you can have a duplicate symbol and duplicate label that is a label or a symbol being defined twice in the same program or a reserve word or a keyword being used as a symbol or label because they are mnemonic of course or assembly directives or they are declaration statements which cannot be used as a symbol or a label so such type of error should be uh, determined and if it is an invalid opcode that is you always need to check whether you that mnemonic opcode exists in the mnemonic opcode table uh, if it is not it is an invalid opcode and such an error should be uh, listed okay so when you are listing and uh, you are reporting errors you need to decide whether you are going to list in pass one or pass two if you do it in pass one of course you are conserving memory you are not making pass two do all the processing once more but the only disadvantage is you can only list certain kinds of errors and not all kinds because certain can some errors can be determined only in by uh, pass two okay and when you are giving error messages you should give full messages that is you should entirely mention why it is an error and you should also specify the line number coming to the final part the organization issues okay now when you uh, look at your pass one and pass two of an assembler it would be like this so if you look at a two pass assembler you would have the source program which is given to pass one now this program source program would be used by pass one also would be required by pass two so it is essential that after pass one processes the source program uh, it should not uh, change the contents of the source program so you can keep a copy of your source program into an other file okay uh, so that it can be processed by uh, pass one now this pass one would basically uh, generate a symbol table but it would use the uh, opcode table that is already present there which contains the mnemonic opcodes and then it would also generate the uh, literal table okay now this pass two would require the source program okay and it, uh, this pass one also generates the intermediate code so this intermediate code this symbol table the opcode table the literal table that are all generated by pass one will be used by pass two it will not only use these but it will also require the source program so your source program and your intermediate code should be present in files and those uh, these files are usually sequential in nature so you should use concepts like uh, record buffering okay uh, when you are uh, doing pass one and pass two of an assembler it is very essential that the symbol table is present in memory all the time okay uh, the opcode table also should be present in memory all the time because these two are very frequently used by pass one and pass two but your literal table 
is not frequently used, but it is free, that free, much frequently used. Ki you can justify its presence uh, in the main memory. Uh, but if you are not having sufficient memory space, then you can place partial literal uh, table into the uh, main memory because it is not necessary. We require the entire literal table. It depends on the current pool. So partial literal table can be present in the main memory at the time of processing and your source program and your intermediate code should be present in files. This is basically, uh, we have just done the theoretical part. We have studied what is a two-pass assembler, how to design it. Later on, in the next part, we will see how to generate the intermediate code and how the equivalent machine code is generated from the intermediate code generated by PASPA.